Vascular supply of head and neck, the common carotid artery, external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery. The arteries supplying the head and neck region arise primarily from the aorta which arises from the left ventricle. The aorta is divided into ascending aorta, arch of aorta and the descending aorta. The arch of aorta gives off branches like the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery. The brachiocephalic artery further divides into right subclavian and the right common carotid. So here we can see that the right common carotid arises from the brachiocephalic artery whereas the left common carotid artery arises directly from the arch of aorta. Carotid vessels, their branches and tributaries form the most important contents of the anterior triangle. The external carotid artery gives eight branches which supply thyroid gland, muscles of tongue, face, ear, occiput, pharynx, temporal region and wide area around the maxilla. The right common carotid artery is a branch of the brachiocephalic artery. It begins in the neck behind the right sternoclavicular joint. The left common carotid artery is branch of the arch of the aorta. It begins in the thorax in front of the trachea opposite a point little to the left of the center of the manubrium. In the neck both arteries have a similar course. At the level of the upper border of the thyroid cartilage, the artery ends by dividing into the external and internal carotid arteries. Now let's take a look at the external carotid artery. The external carotid artery is marked by joining the following two points. A point on the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle at the level of the upper border of the thyroid cartilage and a second point on the posterior border of the neck of the mandible. The artery is slightly convex forwards in its lower half and slightly concave forwards in its upper half. The branches of external carotid artery, it gives up eight branches which are superior thyroid artery, lingual artery, facial artery. These three are the anterior branches. The ascending pharyngeal artery which is the single most medial branch. Occipital artery and posterior auricular artery which are the posterior branches and superficial temporal artery and maxillary artery which are the terminal branches. When we trace these branches on the head and neck region, the superior thyroid artery is present in the region of the hyoid bone and thyroid cartilage, the lingual artery in relation to the mandible, the facial artery which supplies most of the structures in the facial region adjacent and around the maxilla, the ascending pharyngeal artery which is present opposite to the superior thyroid artery, the occipital artery which traces onto the occipital bone, the posterior auricular artery which is present behind the ear, the superficial temporal artery which traces onto the frontal bone and the forehead and maxillary artery which is one of the larger branches of the external carotid artery supplying most of the structures in the face and the head. Superior thyroid artery it arises from the external carotid artery just below the level of the greater cornua of the hyoid bone. It runs downwards and forwards parallel and just superficial to the external laryngeal nerve. It passes deep to the three long infrahyoid muscles to reach the upper pole of the lateral lobe of the thyroid gland. Its relationship to the external laryngeal nerve which supplies the cricothyroid muscle is important to the surgeon during thyroid surgery. To avoid injury to the nerve, the superior thyroid artery is ligated as near to the gland as possible. Apart from its terminal branches to the thyroid gland, it gives up one important branch, the superior laryngeal artery, which pierces the thyroid membrane in company with the internal laryngeal nerve. The superior thyroid artery also gives a sternocleidomastoid branch to that muscle and a cricothyroid branch that anastomoses with the artery of the opposite side in front of the cricovocal membrane. Lingual artery, it arises from the external carotid artery opposite the tip of the greater cornua of the hyoid bone. Its course is divided into three parts by the hyoglossus muscle. The first part lies in the carotid triangle. It forms a characteristic upward loop which is crossed by the hypoglossal nerve. The lingual loop permits free movements of the hyoid bone. The second part lies deep to the hyoglossus along the upper border of the hyoid bone. It is superficial to the middle constrictor of the pharynx. The third part is called the arteria profunda linguae or the deep lingual artery. It runs upwards along the anterior border of the hyoglossus and then horizontally forwards on the undersurface of the tongue as the fourth part. During surgical removal of the tongue, the first part of the artery is ligated before it gives any branch to the tongue or to the tonsil. Facial artery, it arises from the external carotid just above the tip of the greater cornua of the hyoid bone. 
It runs upwards first in the neck as cervical part and then on the face as facial part. The course of the artery in both places is tortuous. The tortuosity in the neck allows free movements of the pharynx during deglutition. On the face it allows free movements of the mandible, the lips and the cheek during mastication and during various facial expressions. The cervical part of the facial artery runs upwards on the superior constrictor of pharynx deep to the posterior belly of the digastric. It grooves the posterior border of the submandibular salivary glands. Next, the artery makes an S bend with two loops, first winding down over the submandibular gland and then over the base of the mandible. The cervical part of the facial artery gives off the ascending palatine, tonsillar, submental, and glandular branches for the submandibular salivary gland and lymph nodes. The ascending palatine artery arises near the origin of the facial artery. It supplies the tonsil and the root of the tongue. The submental branch is a large artery which accompanies the mylohyoid nerve and supplies the submental triangle and the sublingual salivary gland. Occipital artery. It arises from the external carotid artery opposite the origin of the facial artery. It runs backwards and upwards deep to the lower border of the posterior belly of the digastric crossing the carotid sheath and the accessory and hypoglossal nerves. It runs deep to the mastoid process and to the muscles attached to it, which are the sternocleidomastoid, digastric, splenus capitis, longissimus capitis, and then it crosses the rectus capitis lateralis, the superior oblique, and the semispinalis capitis muscles at the apex of the posterior triangle, and finally pierces the trapezius as it comes to lie along the greater occipital nerve. In the carotid triangle, the artery gives two sternocleidomastoid branches. The upper branch accompanies the accessory nerve, and the lower branch arises near the origin of the occipital artery. The branches of the occipital artery are mastoid, meningeal, and muscular. One of the muscular branches is large, called as the descending branch. The posterior auricular artery arises from the posterior aspect of the external carotid just above the posterior belly of the digastric. It runs upwards and backwards deep to the parotid gland. It crosses the base of the mastoid process and ascends behind the auricle, supplying the back of the auricle, the skin over the mastoid process and over the back of the scalp. It is cut in incisions for mastoid operations. Its stylomastoid branch enters the stylomastoid foramen and supplies the middle ear, the mastoid antrum and air cells, the semicircular canals and the facial nerve. Ascending pharyngeal artery it is a small branch that arises from the medial side of the external carotid artery. It runs vertically upwards between the side wall of the pharynx, the tonsil, the medial wall of the middle ear and the auditory tube. It sends meningeal branches into the cranial cavity through the foramen lacerum, the jugular foramen and the hypoglossal canal. Superficial temporal artery. It is the smaller terminal branch of the external carotid artery. It begins behind the neck of the mandible under cover of the parotid gland. It runs vertically upwards, crossing the root of the zygoma or preauricular point where its pulsations can be easily felt. At 5 cm above the zygoma, it divides into anterior and posterior branches which supply the temple and scalp. The anterior branch anastomoses with the supraorbital and supratrochlear branches of the ophthalmic artery. In addition to the branches which supply the temple, the scalp, the padded gland, the auricle and the facial muscles, the superficial temporal artery gives off a transverse facial artery and a middle temporal artery which runs on the temporal fossa deep to the temporalis muscle. Maxillary artery is the larger terminal branch of the external carotid artery. It begins behind the neck of the mandible under cover of the parotid gland. It has a wide territory of distribution which is divided into three parts by the lateral pterygoid. The branches of the first part are deep auricular, anterior tympanic, middle meningeal which is quite an important branch, accessory meningeal and inferior alveolar. The branches of the second part are deep temporal, pterygoid, mesotric and buccal. The branches of the third part are posterior superior alveolar, infraorbital, greater palatine, pharyngeal, artery of pterygoid canal and sphenopalatine in the terminal part. As it is quite an important and descriptive branch, so we shall discuss it in a separate presentation.